I jerked my thumb off the gas lever. In the sudden darkness, I lunged in front of Cat, twisting, trying to put my back to the oncoming rocks. One struck the back of my right shoulder, the other missed. I wrapped my arms around Cat and took her down. When we were cold on our sides, I pulled her face close against my chest and covered her head with my arm. The rocks kept coming. They came fast. Peggy and Donnie must have been throwing. Apparently, they'd gathered plenty of ammo in advance. I don't know how many rocks flew by. Maybe 20. More like 30. Since they were being hurled into total blackness, most missedness. I heard them bounce off the walls and ceiling on the floor both sides of us, in front of us, behind us. They clacked. They thunked. Their sounds varied depending on their size and what they hit and where. A few struck me. I took hits in the back and rump and legs, but none in the head. Some hurt more than others. Though I flinched, I gritted my teeth and kept silent, afraid the kids might come home. At last, the barrage stopped. We stayed down, motionless and quiet. I could feel Cat's warm breath on my chest. Except for the hushed sounds of our breathing and heartbeats, there was an absence of sound. A silence as deep and heavy and oppressive as the darkness.